Online, there are many stock screeners that you can use to be able to find valuable stocks to invest in. But I tell you, there's nothing like building your own custom screener with your specific data and investment criteria. And Excel is one of the best ways to do this because it allows you to filter through that criteria. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can build your own custom Excel stock screener and most importantly, how you can get the data for the screener automatically okay so before we start building the custom excel stock screener i just want to walk you through the structure of the screener so basically what's going to happen is that right here we're going to have the list of symbols and tickers of the companies and then right here we're going to have the name of those companies because as you know the symbol of the company and the name are different so for example for apple that would be AAPL that's the symbol and then the name would be Apple Incorporated or Apple Inc and then across here this is where we would have all the different metrics that we want to compare and analyze this companies by so the first step to building your own Excel stock screener is to get the list of companies that you want to analyze and something that you can do is very simple first to find the type of company that you want to analyze so in this case we're going to focus on tech companies listed in the Nasdaq get the stock list and copy that data into your Excel spreadsheet so I'm going to show you how to do that in this case we're going to do tech companies NASDAQ and then as you can see let's say that we want to use the stock list we're gonna click on it and then in this case it's gonna be 30 companies as you can see here so here's all the different companies we're just gonna copy paste them so select them all copy and then on your spreadsheet, what I recommend is that you do this, create a new spreadsheet tab. And then here's where you're gonna copy paste the data. As you can see, this is the data. So I'm gonna fix this a little bit, zoom in so you can see. And then expand this. The cool thing is that you can just take the list of symbols. You don't have to worry about this other data because I'm gonna show you how to get that uh, automatically on Excel so you copy this data we're gonna get rid of Apple and then paste the data as values only so that way you don't have to worry about any formatting stuff which can get uh, complicated and weird and then the next step is to be able to define the metrics that you would like to include across this axis to be able to get the data for the Excel stock screener, we're going to be using White Sheets. So White Sheets is an add-on for Excel and Google Sheets. And as you can see with White Sheets, it includes this WISE and WISE price function that allows you to get real-time and historical stock data right in your spreadsheet. So the key question is, what metrics should we include in our Excel stock screener? Well, the good thing is that with White Sheets, you have a lot of freedom. So as you can see right here on this page, which is going to be linked in the description for the wise function, you can get data for the income statement, key metrics, balance sheet, financial statements, growth, cash flow statement, revenue segments, blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, if I expand this, you're going to see everything that's included in the income statement. And then you could do that for key metrics as well. And the same concept applies to the wise price function. So this includes live price data, dividend data, and historical price data as well. What I recommend that you do is that you order the data by the function. So for example, let's say that we want to get some live price data. So what we're going to be looking to get is obviously the name. We're also going to get the market capitalization and the stock price. And then separately, as the metrics that we're going to compare, we're going to look at the ROE, the debt to equity, price to sales ratio, PE ratio, and enterprise value. So as you can see here, I have already set up my spreadsheet in this way to get the live price data with the wise price function first. So in this case, all you have to do is enter equals wise price. And then you can see how the function works right here or also here. 
So it accepts one symbol or a list of symbols, and then you can also do one parameter or a list of parameters. So in this case, what we're gonna do is enter all of the symbols, comma, and then here we're gonna enter all the live parameters that we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for the name, the price, and the, mar and the market cap. Close the bracket. And what's going to happen is that you're going to get all of the stock data at once, as you can see. So now it's just a matter of formatting, right? So we're going to expand this so we can see the company names better. That should be good. In terms of the price, we're going to format it in this way. So that way we have the dollar signs. And then for the market cap, we'll do it in this format, but get rid of the decimals. And as you can see, now we're starting to get some of the data that we're looking for. The key thing now is to be able to add the different metrics that we want to analyze all these companies by. Now what I've done is I've added the different metrics that I want to analyze these companies by. So in this case, we have the P ratio, price to sales, ROE, blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to have to use the WISE function to be able to get this key metrics and this data. Keep in mind, you could have also picked some other metrics as well. Like I could have done revenue instead of PE ratio. It's just all up to you at the end of the day. So in that case, what you need to do is enter equals. And now it's going to be wise instead of wise price. You're going to enter the symbol. This only accepts one symbol at a time, but you can enter multiple parameters. So in this case, we're going to enter all of these parameters. We're going to lock the cells in so that way we could drag the function and get all of the data that we want. And then the key thing here is that you need to enter a period. So in terms of periods that are possible, you can see there's TTM. So that's the trailing 12 months. So for example, for the PE ratio, this would take the earnings that are most recent and take that by the current stock price. Uh, for the price to sales ratio, very similar thing. And for the revenue, for example, it would take the sum of the last four quarters of data. So just keep that in mind. You could do TTM, you could do LY, that is the latest fiscal year of data, LQ, that is the latest fiscal quarter of data, and you can do LY minus one, LY minus two, and that's gonna give you the previous years, and you can also do LQ, LQ minus one, blah, 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 so you could get the previous quarters. In this case, to be able to compare the companies more accurately, we're gonna use TTM. So you enter TTM as the period, close the bracket, and as you can see, you're gonna be able to get all of this data. Once you have this function set up, all you have to do is just drag it down so it does get the data for all the different companies in your stock list. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna reload, get you the data, and now you can do any formatting that you want. So in this case, for example, we could, uh, Put it in this formatting and then same thing with the price to sales or i'll show you the roe actually so we'll do that as a percentage i'm not gonna go into the formatting for all of these values and you'll see why in a second which relates to the next step so once you have your stock list with the data and the metrics that you're looking for you can do anything that you would otherwise be able to do on regular excel so you could create graphs to compare the companies and of course you could also use conditional formatting filtering and excel formulas so what i really want to show you is the filtering but before we get into the filtering i want to show you how in this case you can set up custom formulas to be able to more easily spot good investment opportunities so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to set up a very simple rule and we're going to say if and then and so this allows us to test for multiple criteria. If the ROE is higher than, let's say 20% and the P ratio is less than 17, then we're gonna say this is a good company And if this is not the case, then we're going to say this is a bad company. 
So as you can see, in this case, it says it's bad because the PE ratio, this meets the criteria, but the PE ratio is too high. We can just double click to apply the formulas all across. And here in this way, now you can see, oh, you know, this looks good. Here, let me do some more research. And you could also do this for these companies as well. Uh, this criteria, you know, it's probably not the best, but you get the idea so you can apply it to what really matters to you. The next step that I want to show you is how you can filter your data. So you can technically do it here, like I could apply filters to this data, but the problem is that this is using functions. So every time you apply a function, then the function would run and all of the data would reload, which is not ideal. So what I recommend that you do instead is that you copy this. So I'm going to copy this into another spreadsheet tab. Zoom in. And what I'm going to do, this is the key part here. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. So that way the functions don't run. And then what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get into the data, select it all, go into this spreadsheet and then paste as values. And now the data is not going to be live anymore. So this is a good thing because now, for example, so first we're going to do the formatting. So we're going to change it. Make sure we can analyze companies properly here. Get rid of uh, any decimals. So now, as you can see, we have the data properly formatted. And the cool thing is that this is not formulas anymore. So now you can do any formatting you want. So in this case, what we're going to do is this select all of the data click and sort and filter, apply filter. And one of the things that you could do, for example, is to order the data in a specific way. So if I click here in this filter, I could do sort this by descending. So this is going to show you the companies that have the highest market cap. You could do ascending as well. You could also do a number greater than equal or all these different criteria. So for example, going back to the PE, let's say that we want to sort this data by companies that have a PE ratio lower than 15. So in that case, what's going to happen is that you're going to get all these different companies that have that meet this criteria. You can also clear the filter to get the data exactly how it was before. And now once you have your spreadsheet set up this way, now you can go back and forth. So this is where you have the real data that is coming live. So for example, one of the things that you may want to do is to use the wise price function to refresh the data because this is changing constantly. So for example, now let's say the price is probably changing. So we'll see if you click refresh data, you can do this at any time. What's going to happen is that the data will refresh and then you can take this data, highlight it and then, and then update this data right here where it's only the values only if you want to keep applying those filters. Of course, once you have your stock screener set up, what you can do is save it. So save this Excel file and then you can access it anytime, make any modifications you like and you're good to go. As a bonus, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We at Y Sheets are working on a new functionality that's going to allow you to create your own custom screeners on Google Sheets and Excel. And the way it will work is that you will select your stock list, the data that you're looking for, and boom, you're going to get all the data at once without having to even use the functions that you learn in this video to get the data. This is going to make it more effective and it will allow you to more quickly filter through the data. If you're interested in this, make sure to sign up for a free Y Sheets account. And then on our email, stay tuned because we are going to be announcing more on that soon. Now you know how to build your own Excel custom stock screener. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on. So that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this. That's ultimately going to allow you to become a more successful stock market investor. I'll see you in the next one.